What's up, boopers? Welcome back to the third part of my 1 to 45 in 15 hours for Blade and Soul. And again, it's technically 15 hours and 10 minutes, but I'm pretty sure you can speed that up. Now, when we left off, we just started Moon Water Plains, and we skipped a lot of the starting quests, but we are doing the side quests now. We are around level 38, and we deviated our path a bit. So, before we get into this guide, I want to recommend that you watch the first two parts. If you've skipped them and you only want to see how to level the last few levels, just bear in mind that I do not recommend doing this if this is your first time playing through. And again, you shouldn't try and follow this guide if you are a free-to-play player either. And you probably shouldn't try and do this at Head Start. Uh, in the previous guide, I mentioned that you should deviate from this path around the level 36 dungeon and try and complete all the quests. However, if you're leveling an alt or you want to level as fast as possible, keep on watching. So here we are doing all the side quests. Now, since we skipped the first bunch, we should be doing these ones. Uh, our level is still a bit ahead of where it needs to be, but you may notice that mobs start getting more difficult for you to kill now. If you can't AoE grind them anymore, that's fine, especially if you haven't been upgrading your jewelry. Though I think they announced that the cash shop will sell light fangs and all the other upgrade material so you can technically buy them in the cash shop at head start and upgrade your jewelry if you've been following this guide to the letter but there's nothing really special about the quests you're doing here you're doing almost all of the quests only skipping the really annoying ones because there are a couple of quests in this zone that do not give much xp and have you running around wasting time for the example i just did that quest where i give the guy the clothing the controversial censorship quest oh my god censorship I did it, and it doesn't give much XP, it's not really worth it. Um, I don't see what the big deal and all the fuss is about. Kind of a stupid quest anyway. For this dungeon, I am not going to run to the end because the monsters don't leash. Normally you do skip monsters, but those monsters kick your ass. And this is going to start being a common theme. It's no longer easy peasy run through everything. It's going to take a bit of skill to survive some of these dungeons, depending on your class. Because our gear is not super strong. Uh, in my case, I do have the jewelry upgraded, but I'm still having trouble. Uh, for this quest, it can be quite annoying because the wolves don't always spawn the orbs that you need to complete the main quest here. Uh, avoid the big boss and avoid dying and just keep killing the tiny wolves until you get quest credit. And once you get back to the town, you're, gonna go and you're going to get a bunch of dailies and you're finally going to unlock the uh, daily to kill the lichen. You'll also have a bunch of tokens to get your weapon from from the surveys, so try and get your weapon from that. If you don't get it, try and complete the daily as well to kill the lichen, because especially, well, you should try and do it if there's people there killing it. As you can see, I started it without anybody there, and it took quite a while to kill this boss by myself until some other people joined in. But I did get unlucky with the weapon and didn't get it until after I killed the boss. I don't want to use a key on it, and I didn't have any money left to buy it off the auction house, but of course, if you're leveling an ult, and you don't get it the first try, and there's nobody there killing the boss, you may want to skip it and just buy the weapon off the auction house. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get that weapon, but do not skip it, because weapon becomes more and more important the further in we get into this guide, as the monsters get progressively more difficult. Now here we are completing all of these side quests again. These side quests, these farm side quests, they are pretty easy. They don't give a huge amount of XP, but they're extremely easy, and honestly, they're really fun to do. Uh, I like doing these quests. You get to wash pigs and you feel like a farmer. Now your path should deviate a bit here if you want to go super fast. In this guide, I actually take a less slow path. So we just hit about 39 and there is somewhere we can go grind right now. It's called the Wayfarer's Wharf and it's on the west side of this zone. It's kind of a mini dungeon where we can run in and run out and respawn the monsters on two sides. Similar to Vulture's Dig, we'll have to use XP food to do it. Uh, I did not grind here because I don't like grinding there. I don't think it's that much faster than questing. Now it is faster, but you lose out on a lot of gold and you lose out on unlocking several dailies that you will unlock by completing all the quests in the zone, which benefits you later on. And you've got to ask yourself what's more important, uh, progressing your character or getting to max level. I mean, hitting level 45 really fast is cool, but if you skip to doing a ton of stuff in the process, you're just going to have to go back and do it anyway. So technically, you're not really ahead of anybody. You just ran and skipped a bunch of content that you have to go back and do anyway. For this dungeon, again, it's really a pain in the ass. You can kind of skip these, but this is where being in a group really, really starts to help. 
Because these monsters are no longer possible to really pull them all and AoE them down. The monsters are ranged, they will attack you if you try and group them up. So pull sparingly. Be careful, don't be over aggressive, take your time. You waste more time if you die trying to pull too many than you do just killing one or two at a time. And in this camp, again, we're going to complete all the quests. The scarecrows and the pigs and the trees are easily grouped up towards the south side of the town. So I recommend killing them all there. And don't forget to loot the logs for the main quest. Again, lots of mobs need to be killed here. It's perfect for grinding. We love quests where we kill a lot of monsters and get XP. I'm also going to do the side quests at the south camp. And we are going to be coming up on the world boss for our next weapon breakthrough. So this is where I actually use my key. And there's a couple reasons for this, um, so I'm going to explain why I use the key on this box. First, the next purple box, the next untradeable weapon, is the profane weapon, which you get around level 30, 40, 45-ish. You need another Moonwater Transformation Stone. You only get one for free, and it is going to be used on breaking through this weapon. Meaning, you won't need another key. Uh, the next weapon after this is BOE, so you can buy it or trade it, so you don't need to use a key on that, and we won't even be focusing on getting that weapon. I'll talk about it more why when we get to it, but basically it's because this breakthrough, the purple weapon we just used the key on from that boss, is going to cost 2 gold, 70 silver. We're not going to really have 2 gold, 70 silver for a while, so we're not even going to be able to break through. Probably not until right before we hit around max. So. There's no point in saving our key, because we can farm all the weapons all we want at level 45. It's no longer a rush to break through weapons at that point, because we won't have enough gold to break th through them. Unless we're leveling an alt, of course, then you may want to save the key for the profane weapon. But I find that giant fish boss is a lot more annoying to farm than the profane, because there's usually like 50 people killing the profane. There's like one dude farming the fish. So that's my reasoning why I use the key there. Uh, it's pretty much the last breakthrough weapon you're going to get before you hit max. You can get the next blue one, but again, like I said, you probably won't have enough gold to use it unless you're leveling an alt and you have gold on your main. So here we are completing all the side quests again. These side quests are really easy. They're all close together. Um, you can complete multiple side quests at the same time, which is exactly the sign of, kind of side quests we want to be doing. Uh, so we are completing all of them. There was a side quest we did squit, skip a bit earlier that has us digging through haystacks using tails. It takes forever to get quest credit, and it's not worth it, so we did skip it. Uh, but here we are doing all of them. And so I, I didn't really point out where I skipped the quest. Just keep in mind, if you see a quest that has you looting tails and sticking them in the haystacks to look for more monsters, that's the one you want to skip. Don't do that. It takes forever. Now we are escorting. Here is actually an easy dungeon. The pig dungeon we did before, you couldn't AoE monsters. This one, easily AoEing the monsters. Uh, some classes do have trouble with shielded monsters, which appear starting in Moonwater Plains. So if you do have trouble with them, don't try and AoE them. Again, you waste more time if you die than if you just pull one or two at a time. Some classes have a more difficult time than others. Here we are doing all the quests that appear in the town. Uh, we can loot the same egg three times for the cooking quest and then kill all the pigs. And this quest gives full XP like all the other big quests, which is amazing because it's incredibly easy. All the monsters are right beside the quest giver. Uh, and then we're going to complete the, the other quest on the way to the west side of the zone and continue on our merry way. Now next up, we're going to have the Sentinel Dungeon, which is the dungeon for the Breakthrough, uh, I think, Ring? I am not doing it. For the same reason that we don't worry about the next weapon, we won't have enough gold to keep up with the breakthroughs. This is going to happen regardless of if you speed level or not. The stuff gets very expensive to break through. You're going to need to wait a while until you can get the gold around closer to 45. So I'm not going to bother with it for two reasons. One, don't have enough gold to break through because I want to save my gold to break through the weapon. Two, dungeon's freaking hard, man. You can't solo that shit. You got to have someone with you. And again, I'm alone and I didn't want to wait in the queue. And we, again, we don't really need jewelry that much for leveling fast anyway. So we skipped it. We're continuing on the main quest. That area I just passed, we'll pass through it again. That is the Wayfarer's Wharf. This is where you could farm from 39 to about 40 and a half and then run on to the last grind spot. I'll show you it when we run through it once more time. Uh, you could have grinded here instead of questing through that zone, Hogsmead. Uh, the time is about the same. Uh, Wayfarers may be a bit faster. So here's Wayfarer's Wharf. We just entered it. And you can grind right here. 
um, monsters will respawn. You don't need to have the main quest to grind here. Um, using XP food, of course. If you don't have XP food, don't bother with it. Just follow the questing path I took. And of course, not while you're here on the main quest. And yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say I don't recommend it, but I didn't do it because I'm not such a huge fan of grinding and it's not that much faster than questing anyway. Of course, if you want to go super fast, farm Wayfarer's Wharf and then follow up the main quest. We're also going to deviate from the pa fastest possible path again coming up here. So you'll see I am almost 41. 41 is the required level to enter the bright, uh, pff, I don't know the name of the, the Misty Woods, that's it. Uh, 41 is the required level to finish the main quest to enter Misty Woods. Misty Woods is where the best outdoor grind spot in the game is. The part I was talking about in the last guide where it's super competitive for monsters. As soon as you get close to 41, right, right now, what I should be doing is only doing the main quest. So I kind of mess up here. I was The reason I messed up was actually I was debating not grinding. But after doing a few quests, or after doing half the zone rather, I actually decided to go and grind anyway because I got tired of questing. I should have actually just gone for the grind spot right now. I should stop every single side quest I'm doing and only do the main quest in order to get to Misty Woods. That is the fastest way to level. Uh, you will get to see the grinding but if you're interested in going super fast you don't need to pay too much attention to the quests I'm doing now. You should be able to skip them unless of course you did not farm way far as wharf and you are not close to 41 yet you want to be around halfway to 41 uh, before you start skipping side quests and rely on the main quests to hit you to 41 by running through them as fast as possible for this uh, dungeon definitely only do the main quest do not do the side quests no matter what leveling path you're taking the side quests here are a nightmare and they do not give that much xp they're a total waste of time but there are a couple main side quests that are very, very easy to do in this map. So I decide to do them instead of just rushing to the 41 spot. Again, it's probably not the smartest idea. This is why my time was 15 hours when arguably leveling to 1 to 45 can be done in about 13 to 14 hours. So again, I'm giving you guys plenty of room to improve on my time, on my scrubbiness. The side quest I'm completing on the way to the camp, the Fish Belly Pub, gives a bit of XP and it's pretty easy, but I'm not going to complete any of the side quests and the or daily quests in the Fish Belly Pub. They're not quilt quests, they have you running around. There is an easy quest you can do here by killing the pickpocket. It'll instantly give you a daily, which you can instantly turn in. If you can find the pickpocket, pick, pick pocket, god damn it. If you find him stealing the, the person's items, you can kill him and get the daily easy. There we did not do any of the side quests down in that waterfall, waterfall area because the monsters are way too spread out and it's a huge waste of time. Any area where you spend more time running than killing is an area you don't want to be. In this case, however, this hub is beautiful. Tons of close together monsters, easy to kill, quest credit. This is what we want, not that waterfall shit where everything is a mile apart. We also have to complete the main quest here too, so we might as well do all the side quests. They're easy XP. Now here's the dungeon where the next breakthrough weapon is. If you are in a group, you can go for it. It is BOE, so it is tradable. You can also buy it off the auction house if it is not at Head Start, uh, and you have the spare money. Or you can kill the boss pretty easily if you have two people. I wasn't going to bother soloing it, or trying to solo it, because, again, I haven't even broken through the weapon I got earlier. I still don't have enough gold for it. So there's no point getting the next one when I don't have a, enough gold for the previous one. Now, technically, while we are grinding from 41 or 42-ish to 45, we will get enough gold to use that weapon if we had it, but I don't have it in this guide, and it doesn't really make such a big deal. Uh, I only die like t 10 times grinding because I'm terrible, but yeah, again, you guys can improve my five, 15 hours, 10 minutes time in a lot of ways. I've already pointed out a ton of mistakes that I make. Now here, I am I'm not being as efficient as possible. You see, I am 41. This means I should definitely be beelining it for the grind spot if I'm interested in going as fast as possible. The reason I'm killing these Threshers is because they are part of a quest. Um, not that it gives particularly high amounts of XP, but they have a chance to spawn little doggies that give you jewels to upgrade your uh, accessories. You see I talked to a few doggies, get free jewels, it gives me free accessory XP. So I went out of my way to do this quest because not only do those doggies that pop out of the dinosaurs give you free uh, upgrade XP gems for your accessories, they also give you free XP. That's the reason why I did the previous camp as well, to unlock that quest. 
Uh, here, there's a ton of dailies squished together. But I finally wise up and decide, you know what? I don't need to be doing side quests anymore. I'm going to just do the main quest, which is something I should have done and saved myself about 30 minutes worth of dailies earlier. So now I am only doing the main quest. Again, if you are not... Uh, if you're not following this guide, if you're, I mean, if you're playing Head Starter, you're free to play. You should keep doing these quests. Quests are great. They're fun. They give a lot of XP. They're by no means uh, terribly inefficient. It's just not the fastest way to level. And with, that is what we are interested in showing here. And again, this, this is, makes me really nervous to show you, tell you guys to go to the 41 to 45 grind spot. Because if you're playing... I made this video before Head Start. So if you're watching this before Head Start and thinking... Oh man, I'm going to be the first to level. You're going to rush ahead, you're going to go to this grind spot, and you're going to be smashing your keyboard against your puppy because you're so angry there's 30 people stealing your monsters. Really, please, don't try and do this at Head Start unless you can take the rage and you're willing to say, all right, I tried it, too many people grinding, I got to go do something else because there's a good chance that's going to happen. If you're leveling an alt and you don't want to waste time, this will save you about two hours of leveling. Uh, but if you're at Head Start... I would say eat the two hours. Quest, do it slower. Don't be frustrated. It's head start. Like I said, it's gated by the transformation stones. Uh, so while we're only doing the main quest here, uh, there's not much to talk about. I did do one side quest because it was incredibly easy. But while we're doing the main quest here, let's talk about what I mean by gating the Moonwater transformation stones at head start. Now this is only relevant to head start players. The profane weapon, so as I talked about the weapon upgrades, we just got the purple weapon from that giant fish. Then we'll get that blue weapon from that frog dungeon we just passed. The next is the profane, and it's going to require a moonwater transformation stone. It'll be the second moonwater transformation stone you need. You already used the only free one you get on that purple fishman's weapon, so you're not going to have a moonwater transformation stone. What does that mean for you? Uh, you have to craft one, or you have to buy some buy someone else's crafted moonwater transformation stone. Uh, how long does it get? take to get a moonwater transformation stone well it takes about uh it takes about a maybe a day maybe less if you're premium to level your profession high enough that it can even start gathering the correct materials then you have to send your woodcutters off to gra gather the correct log which takes 20 hours that's a real time not some game time 20 hours then you need to craft the refiner assuming you got the recipe already but you had 20 hours to get it gathering the log so you probably did and then the, once you get the recipe to craft the refiner the refiner casts costs 12 hours so that's that's what 32 hours already uh, and then we need to craft the moonwater transformation zones which takes 24 hours so I'm not so good at math 32 plus 24 that's 56 hours just to craft it that's not including the time it took us to level the professions so that's how long you have of a gated progression that's why your head start shouldn't be so rushed you've got to wait 56 hours so if you're at max level in 15 hours like in this guide you can't really level your weapons you can't level your jewelry you can run the dungeons for soul shields and get the to get the crafting materials to upgrade it but you're still going to be waiting for your transformation stones for 56 hours so don't rush at Head Start. Enjoy the game. Only rush if you're interested in farming the PvP Soul Shields or the World Boss and you're super hyper competitive, like a competitor on crack, or you really want to do the 1v1 PvP. That's valid reason. PvPers tend to hate questing anyway. This is a perfect guide for people who hate questing, just want to PvP, get to max, start 1v1 nonstop. Uh, there's not much to say about these main quests, though. Again, this, these dungeons are hard to AoE pull if you're solo, so do not try to. I'm not saying I'm some pro in that if I can't do it, you can't do it. I'm saying that if I can't do it, uh, it's probably hard. I don't think I'm that bad at the game that if I can't do it, it just means I'm terrible and everybody else can do it and I'm a complete scrub. I'm not AoE pulling those monsters. As you saw in that last dungeon, if you're paying attention more to what I'm doing and less what I'm saying, you would have seen that I tried to AoE pull them and I died and I had to revive and obviously that's a huge waste of time. Uh, so we're utilizing Yomaz and only doing the main quest here. I'm trying to be as efficient as possible with our time without dying. One thing that really annoys me about this game is that you have the sprint bar which is cool but the spaces are so freaking spread out that you're just wasting your space bar all the time. 
It like negates. Why even give me a space bar, if, uh, sprint bar, if you're gonna make me fucking run through empty spaces all the time? I mean, anyway, that's just <laughs> that's just my personal complaint. We yo mod out, and we're coming up now on the grind spot. Finally, so this is the last main quest we need to complete. Technically, we can just run north out of this dungeon without completing the main quest, but we're gonna have to go back and complete it anyway. So let's not be that lazy. And in a hurry, unless of course you're trying to grind at head start, then you want to save as much time as possible to get there before everybody else does and start stealing your monsters because you're psychotic and you didn't listen to anything I said in this goddamn video. But uh, yeah, now we completed the main quest, we are in Misty Woods. I think I called it the right name. Yeah, Misty Woods, I got the right name. We're running straight to the skeletons, and this is where we will spend our final leveling period. We are going to get all of our levels here. So what you need is four 100% XP food, lots of potions, and you don't need to worry about repairing because there's a repair guy right there. So as I'm grinding this, you're going to notice a few things. I die a lot. This is actually my first time trying to grind here. Uh, I never tried to grind this to level as fast as possible. I was testing my limits on how many I could pull, how much damage I could take before I would die, and how to avoid the mini bosses. So we've got three camps, uh, three poles, basically, uh, on the north, uh, southwest, and east sides. When you're pulling the monsters, you want to hit the boxes, because the boxes will spawn more monsters. Two deaths. Let's get a death counter. Two. Right, now we're at two. Uh, hitting the boxes will spawn monsters. There's also a lot of monsters laying on the ground, so you won't see their hit boxes until you run near them. It may take a bit of practice to get used to where they are. Three deaths. Good job, Hakurai. <laughs> Three deaths. But you want to get a good path set up so that you can pull all of them and get the boss there. Uh, in my case, as a blade master, what I eventually do after like 10 more deaths, I figure out a system that works really well. Uh, luckily, XP food lasts through death. And again, here's another way you can shave time off of my run. I found a good path where I can tank the mini boss with the axe, and I can tank the might mini boss. But the big fat priest, oh, he's a nightmare because of his stuns. So I try to completely avoid the priest, and I deal with the uh, axe guy and the might as if they are normal mobs. I just block their attacks, I group up the monsters, and then use flash step over and over again to kill everything. The reason why I just run through the mini bosses for the might and the the axe guy is because they're they're in the middle. Uh, it's easier to just aggro them and grab all the monsters, kill the monsters, and then run away from the boss than it is to try and avoid them the whole time. But in the case of the big priest, definitely want to avoid him. Uh, he's a nightmare to deal with. And you can't kill these mini bosses, but then they will just spawn again. There's a maximum of three mini bosses up at a time for each of the poles. So like I said, the north pole, the southwest pole, and the east poles. Uh, there will be a mini boss sitting there the entire time. Now, uh, in the case of me, I am not at head start, and I have, I have no competition. So I'm grinding very fast. Takes about a 30 minutes for a level. So once you get here, it's about two hours from 41 to 45. Even with my deaths, it's about 30 minutes per level. So probably faster than that if you don't suck donkey balls like I do. There are a couple cases where people do show up. They start doing their dailies, they start grinding. I hop channels. I, I quickly realize that it only takes one or two people to be there in order to completely screw with the grind path. And even in order to completely make you inefficient, to have you sitting there waiting for monsters to respawn. One or two people to completely make you waste time waiting for monsters to respawn. And there's only two channels. So let me reiterate, do not try and do this at Head Start. Please, I don't want you to be stuck here with no monsters to kill, and you've skipped so many quests you don't even know where to go back and get XP anymore. Unless you're really psychotic, really hardcore, and really confident that you can get way ahead of everybody else. Now, uh, I did search for other alternative grind spots. There are some, but they just don't stack up. Um, they're slower than questing. Uh, this is by far the best place. The amount of mobs here, the density, and the respawn rates. You can pretty much cycle through these three camps, and by the time you get back to the first one, it'll have respawned. But aside from that, there's not much else to say. We're just grinding here, this is, you're going to be watching three hours of grinding. In the interest of being com a completionist, I am going to show you every single thing I did in this guide, including the amount of times I died. I think I counted three. I probably died again when I stopped counting. But this is it. This is how you level really fast in Blade and Soul. This is the fastest known path. Of course, this isn't all the way to 50. I'll have to 
add another part to go from 45 to 50. And the stuff I said about the moon water transformation stones rings true. Um, the only reason you should use this guide is if you are leveling an alt. Do not use it if it's your first time playing through. You probably shouldn't even have watched these guides if it's your first time playing through because I just showed you the entire game at x10 speed. Kind of a spoiler. Um, but yeah, definitely don't do this if it's your first time through. Enjoy the cinematics, enjoy the gameplay, learn about the game, especially at Head Start because everything's gated. And learn to play your class on the way. Um, one thing that is a good thing about grinding is you really learn what your class can and can't handle. If you don't grind, if you pull one or two monsters at a time the entire way up to max level, you're going to have a really easy time, you're going to think you're awesome, then you're going to get into dungeons and realize you're not so awesome. So really push the limits of what your character can do the whole time while you're leveling. Uh, if you're trying to go faster, if you're not trying to go fast, it's a good way to learn about your character. And uh, while we're grinding this, um, it's worth mentioning that if you're a premium, you get a lots of bonus gold from killing monsters. Just grinding these monsters was enough to make me able to break through my weapon, and it gave me enough money after I hit max to break through everything else. So if you are worried about money because you skipped all those quests, don't worry, monsters give money. Not that much, especially if you're not premium. But if you are premium, um, you're going to have plenty of money when you hit max level to start upgrading your goodies. And again, like I said, there's not going to be much to do until the three days of Moonwater Transformation Stone crafting is up, except grind for the recipe for Mary Potter's, or grind for your Bope or Soul Shields. I don't like calling them Bope. Everyone's like, Bope, Bope. Soul Shields is cool. Why doesn't everybody let Soul Shields happen? It's the thing that should happen. Soul Shield. It's a shield for my soul. Yeah. You can start grinding your Soul Shields for PvP. That's one big reason you may want to rush at Head Start. Oh, there's another death. Woo! Uh, you may want to grind the PvP Soul Shields in Misty Woods, and it's a lot easier when there's no one there trying to kill you. Uh, you can rush the world boss, and you can start farming the dungeon, get ahead of everybody on gold. But everybody's probably going to get their profane weapon around the same time, around that marker where everybody gets the transformation stones. And for professions, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about it much because the guide went by really fast. I did level... As you can see right here, I'm leveling my professions the entire time as I was grinding, and you definitely want to do this. The only profession that's really worth talking about is uh, Soul Wardens and Mary Potters. This will get you your transformation stones. The other professions are kind of helpful. I think Earth Seers and Acquired Taste will help with the 20 second sprint quest. But other than that, the other materials that they grant you are not that great. Uh, I think weaponsmiths are needed. If you are in a clan, there's a couple of recipes that clans can craft that require different professions. So if your clan leader tells you to join a crafting guild for the sake of the clan, then you probably want to. But if you're leveling solo, you definitely want the ability to craft your own transformation stones so you don't have to buy them off of other people. They're going to be way overpriced. In the uh, beta, we saw their prices drop to three gold towards the last beta uh, because the market became oversaturated. That's not really going to happen in uh, live because we need a ton. In the beta you only needed about like three before your weapons maxed out. Um, when we get to live to upgrade our jewelry we need five each and then we need a ton for our weapon progression too. So instead of buying those things for five gold which it takes like a a full set of dailies to get you to five gold almost. So that's a lot of gold. That's like ten days of dailies to buy all the transformations you need for two pieces of jewelry. You're gonna want to craft them yourself. Have an alt do it or have a friend do it. Especially if you sacrifice your professions for the twenty second sprint quest, then make sure your friend is crafting. But yeah, here, just grinding, 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 grinding. And again, if you hate grinding, then you definitely don't want to follow this guide. This took me about, I think I was here for an hour and 45 minutes. It would be longer, but I came here a bit late. I did more quests than I needed to. And I like to listen to awesome music when I'm grinding, but that's all the advice I have for grinding. That's it. I will just leave you guys here because I'm running out of shit to say about this guide and I'm starting to sound like an idiot. So I am going to let you guys see the ending here. I'll slow it nice and down. 
I slough it down nice and easy so you guys can see the final moments. Oh, I missed the box. Gotta aggro the skeletons. Oh, I'm so close to 45. Gotta aggro that one too. Oh, here it comes, guys. Oh, it's so, it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, here's, they're grouped up. Oh, knock them down. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, here comes a flash step. Mm. And then one, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's not enough. One more. Bop. Perfect. Exactly calculated. 45. That's it for this leveling guide. I hope this helps you for leveling alts. Don't use it at Head Start. All that shit I said, booping out. Boop.